friends, welcome to a new episode of our program. Today we'll be talking about hypothyroidism and food. Hypothyroidism means low, the word hypo means low. Thyroidism refers to the thyroid gland, a very important gland placed in the base of our neck. It looks like a butterfly, it produces hormones that are very important to regulate a lot of functions in our body. For example, breathing, our heart rate, muscle strength, body temperature are all directly related to the hormones produced by the thyroid gland. And for those who diet or those who want to run away from diet, they blame it on the thyroid because it does affect metabolism and it does affect our ability to lose weight or not. So yes, for people with a problem in their thyroid, it will affect the weight loss and they, it's very, very challenging for them to lose weight as fast as other people with no thyroid problems. Now, Nestled in the tissues of your neck is a small, unassuming organ that wields enormous power over your body. It's called the thyroid. Like the operations manager in a company, its role is to make sure that the cells in your body are working properly. It does that by using hormones to deliver messages to every single one of them. This high-ranking organ is made up of lobules that each contain smaller cells called follicles, which store the hormones the thyroid sends out into your blood. Two of the most important hormones it produces are thyroxine and triiodothyronine, or T3 and T4. As messengers, the hormone's job is to instruct every cell in the body when to consume oxygen and nutrients. That maintains the body's metabolism, the series of reactions our cells perform to provide us with energy. This hormonal notification from the thyroid gets the heart pumping more efficiently and makes our cells break down nutrients faster. When you need more energy, the thyroid helps by sending out hormones to increase metabolism. Ultimately, the thyroid allows our cells to use energy, grow, and reproduce. The thyroid is controlled by the pituitary gland, a hormonal gland deep in the brain that oversees the thyroid's tasks, making sure it knows when to send out its messengers. The pituitary's role is to sense if hormone levels in the blood are too low or too high, in which case it sends out instructions in the form of the thyroid-stimulating hormone. Even in this tightly controlled system, however, management sometimes slips up. Certain diseases, growths in the thyroid, or chemical imbalances in the body can confuse the organ and make it deaf to the pituitary's guiding commands. The first problem this causes is hyperthyroidism, which happens when the organ sends out too many hormones. That means the cells are overloaded with instructions to consume nutrients and oxygen. They become overactive as a result, meaning a person with hyperthyroidism experiences a higher metabolism, signaled by a faster heartbeat, constant hunger, and rapid weight loss. They also feel hot, sweaty, anxious, and find it difficult to sleep. The opposite problem is hypothyroidism, which happens when the thyroid sends out too few hormones, meaning the body's cells don't have as many messengers to guide them. In response, cells grow listless and metabolism slows. People with hypothyroidism see symptoms in weight gain, sluggishness, sensitivity to cold, swollen joints, and feeling low. Luckily, there are medical treatments that can help trigger the thyroid's activities again and bring the body back to a steady metabolic rate. For such a little organ, the thyroid wields an awful lot of power, but a healthy thyroid manages our cells so effectively that it can keep us running smoothly without us even... Now the thyroid problems, and specifically when we say hypo, because it can be even hyper and more, is due to many causes, one of which is an autoimmune disease like in Hashimoto's thyroidism. Also, um, when they are uh, people are exposed to uh, radiation a lot, people who over consume iodine from therapeutic um, sources. So all these things may affect the function of the thyroid gland and will make it slower in producing these hormones. And it depends on the level of the hormone secretion from, these, uh, from this gland 
the intensity of the disease would happen. The good news is that it's not life-threatening in most of the cases and can be treated through hormones the physicians prescribe them for people. But as we said, it does slow metabolism because it does affect the way the body processes carbohydrates and sugar and it does affect the muscles leading to lack of physical activity which would contribute further to not losing weight. However, there are recommendations and tips that may help people with hypothyroidism lose weight. Please stay tuned and you'll get to know more about these food items. Welcome to the second segment of our program and we are talking about foods that may help people with hypothyroidism lose weight. Now as we've said earlier, one of the causes may be an autoimmune disease or autoimmune nature. That means the body attacks the tissues and destroys the tissues so they cannot produce the hormones. So when the people take the hormones prescribed their physician, they should also take into consideration modifying their eating behavior. For example, um, grass-fed um, poultry and uh, meat sources are better than grain-fed uh, proteins. Why? Because again, when you grass-feed, you're cutting back on toxins and you're cutting back on hormones used in the feed of the animals so it will help boost the immune system in a way or not damage it further. The same applies to uh, dairy products. If you have organic dairy, although we see we, um, always that the nutritional value is the same, but the reduction in toxins and hormones may improve health of people with hypothyroidism. Also, we know an, another disease of uh, autoimmune nature, which is celiac, where people avoid having wheat or gluten sources, maybe this approach will help with people with hypothyroidism as well. So perhaps some people can benefit, try to avoid wheat uh, and other products that are rich in gluten and have the right amount of carbohydrates using corn or using rice in this case. Some people do benefit if their disease comes or stems out from an autoimmune nature. Also, people should have the caloric balance, the right amount of calories in their foods, but also they have to take into consideration sources of fat because they are triggers of inflammation in the body, so they should use the right amount of fat when they do eat their food. So they can use avocado oil, they can use olive oil, and they, use, they can use canola oil every now and then. Their proteins should be lean, trim the fat, and fish is their best option. Please stay tuned, more recommendations will be coming through. Welcome to the last segment of our episode about food and hypothyroidism. Hydration is very important. Make sure you have an ounce of water for every pound of body weight of the target body weight. So you will make sure you're having enough of the fluids. One recommendation is not to over um, indulge in soy products, especially raw products. You may use soy uh, a little bit as a condiment or in its fermented format because soy may interfere with the medication given for hypothyroidism. Also, Brazilian nuts, which are very rich in selenium, are very good. However, many of the treatments of hypothyroidism would have selenium supplementations. So if you are on supplementation, do not consume more than two of the Brazilian nuts because otherwise you will have the toxicity from over consuming selenium. You have to be also vigilant uh, regarding stressors of the immune system and stressor of the thyroid problems. So try to avoid processed food and try to avoid sugar. Sugar 
and um, sugary drinks may really harm your thyroid problem and may not help you lose weight the way you're supposed to. So not because of the calories, but because of the processing of sugar and carbohydrate that is different for people with hypothyroidism. Also, caffeine may be a stressor for some people. So also be sure you do not overdo it because it will increase the cortisol levels, which affect also your hormones and may interfere with your weight loss. Also, if you have any food allergies, they will affect your immune system. So if you have a peanut allergy or any kind of food, make sure you avoid that as well to, in, to ensure that your immune system is working well and not fighting against you. Also, there are foods that are known as goitrogenic foods. And these foods may affect the problem. You know, also when the, the thyroid gland enlarges, we call it goiter, the condition. So these food would really contribute to enlarging it in size, especially if they're consumed raw. So avoid raw cauliflower, avoid raw turnips, avoid raw Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and this family. So if you really take into consideration all these recommendations and have things just in the right portion, have them from the right source, you're likely to lose weight despite your hypothyroidism. Thank you for watching us and hope to see you in other episodes.